Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. All right, let's take a trip to the southern border, shall we? <clears throat> All sorts of fun stuff going on down there. Um, so, Senator James Langford, who's from Oklahoma, he's in the he's a Republican. He has been working in the Senate on a bipartisan committee with Kirsten Cinema and. Forgive me, I don't remember who the Democrat was on this, but working to come out, come up with a um, a deal to address uh, immigration at the border and um, you know, dealing with the humanitarian crisis as well as immigration happening at the border. Um, he came up with a bipartisan deal. It's been hard fought. They were working on the final uh, text on it. Then Mike Johnson announces that he's been in you know, long conversations with former President Donald Trump, who then later on in the article, he referred to as President Donald Trump. Dude's former president, not the current president. Um, and that Trump doesn't want this because he wants to he wants to campaign on the border crisis and in and, and that. So the Republicans aren't taking yes for an answer. Biden says he'll back it up. He'll, he'll enforce it. The Senate Republicans, Democrats and independents have hammered together a compromise Johnson said it says it's DOA. I've thrown twice on this now, and twice I've gotten that it gets through. So um, I want to kind of get some more details. Also, that same Senator James Langford, he is now <laughs> being sanctioned and censured, uh, vote for a censure by the Republican Party because, as they quoted, uh, his his playing loose and fast with the Democrats. <gasps> Oh, where's my pearls? My partisanship. And Langford had a great quote. Um, it's interesting. Republicans four months ago would not give funding for Ukraine, Israel, and for our southern border because we demanded changes in policy. So we actually locked arms, Republicans and Democrats and independents, and said, we're not going to give you money for this. We want to change the law. I'm sorry, the Republicans said, we're not going to give you money for this. We want to change in law. It's Now it's interesting. A few months later, when Republicans, Democrats, and independents have hammered things out, and we have finally are getting to the end of this bipartisan deal, the GOP is now saying, oh, just kidding. I actually don't want to change in law because of this is a president, presidential election year. And the, and the likely GOP nominee wants to run on this. I wish you could make this stuff up. I wish this was on the onion. <sighs> this is America. I thought this was America. What's the energy around this border deal in the Senate? Um, will, uh, is this Senate border deal, immigration deal, Dead on arrival in the House. So border deal, Mike Johnson, House of Representatives. What's the energy around this? My deck is upside down. <clears throat> Again, three of cups, celebration. Republicans, Democrats, independents in the Senate have worked on this and have come to an agreement. Most conservatives, normal, what we would probably refer to as normal Republicans, who the current Republican Party refers to as rhinos, this is like, <laughs> I'm going to be crude, this is their wet dream. They've been having wet dreams about this for a long time, and they're actually getting everything they want, or pretty much everything they want. Democrats have given up a lot on this, mostly because I think they want to get the funding over to Ukraine. Now, segue, sidebar. Um before you get too worked up about it, understand that the Republicans have a slim majority in the House. The Democrats basically have a tie in the Senate that's broken by Kamala Harris. So things are as purple as can be. You have to have compromise. You may not like this compromise, but you have to have compromise. If there's a big blue wave this fall, which I think there's going to be, and you have like maybe four or five extra seats in the Senate, and maybe you gain like you know, 40 or 50 seats in the House, you can revisit this legislation and get it to be something a little bit more what you like. You might be able to raise the, maybe you keep the, the uh, um, 
the, the flow of people coming in, you have some numbers, you can raise those numbers. Maybe you provide more funding so that you've got um, more people in the court system to help process the immigrants coming in for asylum cases. Uh, you can then also work in something for the dreamers. This is something right now to address the humanitarian crisis that's at the border. It's a political hot potato. If you can get through it, you know, also everybody wins. The United States wins on this one if they can if they can agree on this. And you can make adjustments later uh, if need be. Let's cross. Back to American politics. You know, this could be interesting. This could be that opening salvo to an era where there's some bipartisan work going on again, where maybe things are coming back to normal. These are great cards. Um, and you got the chariot. It's a big push going forward. This is kind of, we're going to get more of the same. <coughs> Why is the, so the energy around this is, you know, is this going to be dead on the house? There's a celebration here. People want this. I'm wondering if, you know, if uh, Republicans start getting hearing from their constituents as to what they want with this border deal. You know, again, it's one of those things you've been campaigning on this and saying, got to protect America. They finally come up with something and you say, no, we don't want it. It has to be perfect. <laughs> Something's better than nothing, and you're getting a lot of something out of this. In the past, we had the Sun card. Um, the Republicans have campaigned on this. They've campaigned heavily on this. And, you know, they said, oh, we can't do it unless we have a... Ch uh, they don't want executive order. They wanted a change in legislation. Okay, so they come up with the legislation. Well, that's not what we want because Donald Trump says no. So they're... They're basically they're basically uh, saying the quiet part out loud and giving away the game as to what's going on. So they're they're starting to show what's driving their decision making. I can imagine the Haley conservatives might get on the phone with their uh, with their uh, Congress people. Current situation: Four of Wands, opening day. Here it comes. It's coming to the House. The Senate has agreed on it. We're going to give it to the House to get this thing passed. And, you know, again, this is folks on one side of the border and the other side of the border. These are, so far, great cards. <clears throat> the overarching energy is politics. Uh, Mike Johnson says it's dead on arrival. They're wondering if he's trying to get some leverage out of the uh, out of his right. The folks on the far right in the in the House of Representatives are never going to support this because they only support what Donald Trump wants. But the other half of the Republicans would support this. And the Democrats would probably, you know, look down and kick a can a little bit and support it, too. So it can pass if Johnson chooses to bring it to the floor. If it comes to a vote, it's going to pass. The lesson to be learned, the Knight of Swords. Um, it's almost like... Uh, I, I could see where Johnson wants some last-minute changes. Um, this could also just be fury from the voters. You know, polls coming out, how many people want this to pass? I don't know if polls really mean anything because certainly a lot of polls would tell you that uh, they want women's reproductive rights. <laughs> People seem to like that. People seem to like common sense gun laws, but that doesn't seem to impact the Republican Party at all. Now, does it? All right. Something's going to happen. There's an and it, there's an energy around here that something's going to happen. Something's going to change quickly. But there's an agreement. There's going to be an agreement. Maybe there might be some last minute changes that Mike Johnson wants. So he can have his victory with the um, with the MAGA crowd. Maybe they, they can lower some of the numbers or something along those lines. Who knows? But there's going to be an agreement. I keep seeing <laughs> that this thing is going to get through the House. So Mike Johnson keeps saying it's not going through, but I keep seeing it going through. That's three for three now. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going to ask Spirit, 
what gets it through? Let's see if I can actually, <laughs> if, if Spirit can help share, help me understand the why. I get that it's going to go through. Why does it go through? What changes? What's, maybe the better point is, what is the key underlying factor that causes this to change? Is I mean, is this just politics? Is this just posturing? Is there pressure from society? I don't understand politics. I really don't. Okay. So what's the underlying causes? What is the what is the underlying causes or cause or causes that allows this agreement to go through? Again, the Democrats want to get. Uh, I, I imagine that you know if you can help knock down the surge and get more services for women and children, but there's also that funding for allies. What what is the underlying energy that causes the agreements that we're seeing? Page of Pentacles, messaging about values, money, money. You just you just have to pay. Is that really it? Grifting. <sighs> The Republicans have been fundraising off of this something fierce. The magician. I'm wondering if, if what it might end up happening is that um, the they've been fundraising off of the mythology that there's this invasion at the border, and you know they're working hard to get this, and now this offer comes through, and you know if you don't take it. I think the fundraising is gonna is going to dry up. Knight of Cups, illusions, delusions, Queen of Cups. <clears throat> what does it? Um, it's money. There's some money component, whether it's fundraising or something like that, and. You know, it could be that they're just trying to, it, it could very well be Mike Johnson's trying to negotiate a little harder. You know, there's there's a, trying to keep your giddiness down, trying to keep your emotions in check. So it might be a poker game here. Comes forward with maybe a, an offer, whether it's sincere or not, we can uh, debate. But honestly, I think there's a constituency problem that they're going to run into with the grip with the grifting they've been doing on this because they have a solution and they're choosing to ignore it. And it might be hard to convince your constituents that you need a perfect deal when they look at this one and say, this deal looks perfectly fine. Why wouldn't you want it? It addresses everything you want. Everything we want in there. Why aren't you taking it? Is this all, you know, basically, have you been lying to us the whole time? And it might just be that um, the Republicans, they look at the uh, the lay of the land and realize if they don't, this is a gift. If they don't take this gift, then they may lose, um, they may lose the narrative with their base. They'll realize the base, realize they've been lying to them. They're delusional. They're never going to get a better deal. And... The money starts drying up. I really do think there's this is going to be a money issue. It's a money or an ideology issue. And I don't think that the Republicans, again, can take the reputational hit of being offered pretty much everything they want and just saying no to it, especially when they haven't passed any legislation on any of the things that they ran on. And it's an election year. I mean, that could also be that page of pentacles is... You might have some House of Representative members and some senators who are going to have a real hard time going back there, going back to their constituents and saying, yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good deal. But Trump says we can do better. <laughs> yeah, well, Trump has to be elected first, right? And you guys need to win Congress, right? How are you going to win Congress if you're not getting stuff done? Okay. Just a quick little four carter. What's Mike Johnson thinking right now with this border deal? Is he bluffing? What's it, what's he really thinking? He's got the grip too. 
Yeah, this is this was that Mike John. He's just I think he's just trying to get a little bit of a better deal. Ace of Swords, yay! Mystery, trying to keep his hand secret. <clears throat> He's going to agree to it. Now, this could be Donald Trump he's talking to in the background about this. But <clears throat> this card also came up in the last reading. So the problem is there's supposed to be he's trying to keep a mystery, but he's giving the game away. He's already he's already basically blew it and said he's been talking with Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump's never going to be satisfied with the offers. And this is going to be one of those uh, options where... You know, some Senate, some uh, Republican leaders and such, and maybe the GOP, can, the conservatives come forward and say, you're taking this, you're going to take this deal and do it. There's going to be a debate between the uh, the MAGA crowd and the conservatives. But I think because Johnson's given the given the game away here, there's a, a real push from the conservatives saying, this is it. This is the best deal we're going to get. This is victory for us. We have to take it. They're not going to give you a better deal. Do not rely on Donald Trump. Donald Trump's not satisfied with ever, anything. I think he's going to basically cave in. He, he's been trying to... I think he was trying to get a little bit of a better deal. Um, but he gave it away when he said, yeah, I've been talking with Donald Trump. So it makes Johnson seem like he's not in charge, that Donald Trump is. And that might play well to the Freedom Caucus members. But it's not going to play well to the non-Freedom Caucus members. All right. And lastly, Mr. Langford here is, is going to be censured. James Langford. Will they censure James Langford? I know. None of you care. <laughs> I'm interested. None of you care. I get it. <laughs> Hang them up. They string all the Republicans up. And if it's Republicans stringing up Republicans, even better. You know, self cannibalism there. But uh, James Langford <laughs> seems to have tried to negotiate in good faith and has gotten a great deal. Will they call him a rhino and and, and uh, censure him? Judgment. Yeah, they're going to cast judgment on him for this. Even though it gets passed, they're going to cast judgment on this. Three of Wands. Here's the immigration bill. Yep, folks coming in. Hanging man. Oh, they're going to sacrifice him. Yeah, we were forced to take this deal. Oh, I can't believe it. They're going to publicly sacrifice this guy, but behind the scenes, they're going to be supportive of him. <laughs> Christmas. Just to please the MAGA. This is performatory. They have to go through this, this performance for the QAnon and MAGA nutjobs in the party. Up is down, left is right, black is white. <laughs> you did a good job with those negotiations. You've addressed all the immigration, immigration, yeah, immigration stuff. But we have to sacrifice you because we got crazy people in the party and they need, to, they need their pound of flesh. Oh, God. Why would anybody want to be running with the Republican? Okay, I understand why. But, uh, you know, they talk about no honor amongst thieves. Anyway, <laughs> summing up, I still see this deal getting passed. I think that uh, underneath it all, there's either Johnson is trying to, to eke out a little bit of a win or get a little bit more. But I do think that. There's a lot of concern from Republicans in election year. They have an opportunity to come forward with legislation that they can run on. And if they don't pass this legislation, the Republican Party is already having a funding issue. They're going to have a huge funding issue if they turn down this deal. And I think there's going to be a real push from traditional conservatives to the Republican leadership in the House to get this deal done. And uh, Johnson's given away the game by saying Trump, he's been talking with Trump and this, this is what Trump wants. Well, yeah, Trump's not the leader, the Speaker of the House. You are. He, you need to make your decisions. And there's going to be a lot of Republicans that want that decision being made and they will put pressure on him. And then 
of course, because they get it done and somebody's got to be the fall guy to appease Donald and his, his followers, they'll take Senator James Langford, who negotiated this deal and got him a great deal, and throw him under the bus. Behind the scenes, you know, they'll they'll tell him that they thought he did a great job and there's a lobbying few if he gets voted out senator they'll give him a lobby position or something along those lines but they had to find they had to find a sacrifice they had they had to give the MAGA crowd their pound of flesh what a freaking train wreck this country is right now but <laughs> you got me <laughs> That's something, right? <laughs> that and 35 cents will give you a phone call to someone who cares. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your likes and your shares and everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so my video makes it out to a wider audience. To folks just recently discovering this channel, welcome. Glad you found us. Hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.